There's a party in the lobby. <laughs> Good morning, church. Welcome to New Albany Methodist. We're so excited to have you here today, here at church, and um, worshiping with us at home. And now I'm going to ask you to stand as you are able as the band leads us in our first song, Forever Rain. Oh, I'm running to your own. 
no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. too. My name is Jen Klima. I'll be your worship leader this morning. And um, before we greet each other, I, I think some of you have heard me make the analogy between our favorite foods and cheese and bacon before. I just got to say it again, that the saxophone, like Greg is the cheese and bacon of this band. <laughs> it's like it was already amazing. And then you put the cheese and bacon with the saxophone on it, right? And it's just so thank you. It's awesome. Okay, before we get started, um, could you turn to the people in your row behind you and just say good morning? Good morning, band. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Bless you. And if you want to wave to the people at home, the camera's right behind us up there with the LYN. If you want to guess what it says, you can shout it out what LYN means. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. All right, go ahead and have a seat. So today's, today's message is a continuation of our sermon series about extraordinary people, and specifically today is extraordinary people are thankful. And we have, we have a lot to be thankful for just here, right? I just want to mention really quick a few of the ministries that we're doing that I'm really grateful for that you can be a part of as well. So you always see the shopping cart out here in front when you come in. Right? We're, we're supporting the New Albany Food Pantry, and it turns out we're really good at it. Like, I mean, some people might be like, oh, I donate food. We're expert level food donators in this church, so um, keep that up. I think Jean said she took three cartfuls of food over just last week. Just last week. That's impressive. So that's an easy way to give back, and, and we're a church that is really good at that ministry. So. Um, I think there's still plastic bags out there to put your food in. You can grab one on the way out and keep, those, keep that cart full. The other one you'll see is right out here in the front um, or in the lobby. You'll see the pack and play. We are supporting the Little Bottoms ministry. And specifically, what we're trying to do is supply them with all the wipes we can possibly get. All the baby wipes, which is another easy way to get involved because, you know, we all go shopping 
right? You go to Costco, you go to Target, Kroger, just grab a pack of wipes and leave them there. Yeah? Anything else, Sally? Are we collecting anything else for Little Bottoms? Well, we take anything for ages up through 5 Okay. So anything up through age 5, so size 5T for babies, they take it. We take it. So not just wipes, okay? So if you have something you want to give, please do so. Um, a couple other announcements. Um, as many of you know, the kids right now are practicing for the Christmas musical, which we are so excited to bring back. And they're doing that during this service. So if your kiddo wants to participate, bring them to this service and take them back to Pastor Amy and they can participate in the musical. Easy. Um, next weekend, we've got two things going on. We've got Hanging of the Greens, which is very exciting. But before that, for the ladies, we are starting a small group for Advent study. And that's going to be led by Pastor Amy with assistance by me. <laughs> right, exactly. Thank you, Frank. That is the correct answer. No, so, um, and we're actually going to be doing a, a really fun Advent study based on this book, which is The Heart That Grew Three Sizes. So it's, it's based on the Grinch, right? And, and how we can sort of get, bring out the best in ourselves in this season, right? Because this is the season where we start thinking about the miracle of Jesus. Um, the miracle of Jesus, and it starts now. So this is, this is um, not this, this. This is the book we are following. If you have questions, please, please come talk to me after service. I'll, I'll, I'd be happy to answer, but hope to see you there next weekend at 4. Um, okay. So extraordinary people give thanks. If you all want to follow along with me, our reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in their barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Yeah. Gratitude for the day, my friends. I, I said before that this is a season where, you know, I personally really start thinking about miracles, right? And so I, I, I just want to share a few things that, that I'm really thankful for and maybe give you something to think about this week as well as we go into Thanksgiving. Um, so locally, so close to me, I'm very thankful for the fire department who showed up at my house at two in the morning on Tuesday because our carbon monoxide detectors went off. It was a false alarm, of course it was, but they showed up with a smile on their face, said hello to my kids, made sure my house was safe. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the, for the school nurses at our schools who continue to deal with the pandemic with generosity and grace and so much patience that I can't believe it. Joy is here today. I told her I was gonna call her out, she's over there. Joy has been running the COVID, all the things COVID for New Albany schools, everything. Yes. 
She makes the phone calls. She enforces the policy. She stays up on what's going on. And believe me, that is not the job most of us want right now. But it's so important, and she's amazing. So globally, this is what I'm thankful for right now. And, and I truly believe this is a miracle. No matter how you feel about what's going on right now, in the past two years, the development of treatments, vaccines, interventions, infrastructure, professionals, all the things around the pandemic. The coordination and the, the science and the collaboration worldwide that has taken place in just two years is a miracle. It's a miracle, it is. This has never happened before. It's never happened before. If you think of the totality of what people have come together, again, worldwide, come together to do in such a short period of time, that is a miracle and that is God at work. That is God at work. God works within these walls. God works, God works inside of the people within these walls. God works in people outside of these walls. God works in institutions outside of these walls. So I just want you to think about that. I just want you to think about the gravity of that this week. Because it, it's a miracle, my friends. It really is a miracle. And it, it makes my heart warm and happy to know that despite like all the difficulties that I've had, that I know other people have had, that all of this is going on. And it is good. It's good. This is good. So, Frank's going to talk to you guys about gratitude today. He's going to talk to you about gratitude today, and I want you to think about this as he's talking, because this is an important message. Before I start crying, we're going to pray. Oh, dear God, thank you for... Thank you for being, us being here together today to worship you. Thank you for the kids down the hall that are singing. Thank you for working in us, around us, through us, and through others. For, for what is good, for what is good, for what is good for us and what is good in your name. And God's people said, amen.
wherever life has been leading you, God led you to this place this morning. And we thank you. Thank you, band. We love you. Let's pray. Oh, dear and gracious God, speak to us this morning. Help us to multiply the love. Help us to multiply the thanksgiving. Help us to realize that we didn't get here by ourselves, that we did not achieve what we have achieved by ourselves. We will not get out of the messes we are in by ourselves. We will not find the friendship we need by ourselves. It is through your guidance. And so we ask you to take these gifts that we have received and multiply them, use them for the building of the kingdom in this time, in this place, through these ministries and through many more which will emerge from this place. Help us to unleash your love for the healing of the nations. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My name's Pastor Frank, and I am so glad to see you this, this morning um, on this beautiful beginning to Thanksgiving week. Um, those of us who are uh, in the family of faith, you will receive or you have been receiving uh, this week uh, estimate of giving cards for the year two, 2022. Please pray over those. Consider what life has called you to do in ministry together and multiply the love. And next week and the following weeks, those cards will be coming in and we will be able to decide what dynamic things we can do as we partner with Jesus. And we pray in his name. Amen. So we've been talking about extraordinary people. Pastor Carol was here a couple of weeks ago from Idaho, and she said extraordinary people are not perfect, but their behaviors and responses are out of the ordinary. Extraordinary people, their accomplishments not, might not their accomplishments might be big and known to everyone or behind the scenes and known to only a few. Extraordinary people make their world better by being in it. And you are extraordinary people by that definition. Week two, we talked, to, I, last week I talked about um, <laughs> extraordinary people get washed. And I, I started by talking about the baptism of Jesus. I, I, I mentioned that uh, there are some things that come upon us in this world that grime us up. And it's true for all of us, it's a good practice to get washed to freshen up, to freshen up for God, to freshen up for the one, ones God loves. And I, I finished the, the message by talking about a young pastor who had been sent to an Appalachian Mountain church, a church that was down up in the mountains, had a little lake nearby. And on Easter evening, the practice of that church was to go out go out to this little lake on a sandbar in the lake and do some baptizing. And those who were going to be new in the fellowship would go out in the, into the water, into the shallow water, and the pastor would do some baptizing. These were adults kind of dipping them into the water. I mentioned to you that, that when John baptized Jesus, that was in the Jordan River, and the Jordan River is chilly and cold. It's snow melt, and you baptize in the Jordan River. We've done that. And your feet go numb, just, they go numb. 
So John was baptizing. So, 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 and, and Jesus came to him and he said, I need to be baptized by you. And John said, no, I, I need to be baptized by you, my cousin. And he says, no, do this for all righteousness. And so John the baptizer baptized his cousin, Jesus. And the sky opened up and said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. So there was this young pastor who had been appointed to a church that was up in the mountains of Appalachia. There was a a little pond or a lake nearby, and they were doing some baptizing on Easter evening in the pond on a sandbar, in the water near the sandbar. And after all the baptized people came up out of the water and dried themselves off, then they stood by a fire that had been built for them so they could warm themselves. And all the people of the church stood around them. And one of the members said about the new people, this is John. And one of the members in the circle said, John, my name is Sue. If you ever need someone to do some washing or ironing, you call Sue. And then someone else said, my name's Eric. If you ever need some, anybody to do some chopping wood, you call Eric. And my name is Adam. If you ever need somebody to watch the children, you call Adam. My name's Helen. If you ever need anybody to repair your house, you call Helen. My name's Betty. If you ever need somebody to sit with the sick, you call Betty. And so it went. This week, I got a call about that little, sur- that little story I told in the sermon. Barbara called me. She laughed. She said, well, she says, I'm kind of ornery. I'm new in town. And I was just going to say, my name's Betty. But then I couldn't, wouldn't be able to tell you what I could do to help you. But I'm just calling you to say, I watched your service last week. And I found my church. She said, I don't know what I can do. And then she said, maybe I could help with that baby wipe ministry. And then she says, I, I make baby blankets. Do you ever need any baby blankets around your church? Oh, yes. Some go to the hospital. Some go to Little Bottoms. She said, she said, come to think of it, I'm a teacher of English as a second language. Do you have a ministry like that? We might be able to put you in the circle. Around here we've been saying there are five essential practices for Christian living. Pray, study, Give, serve, share. Pray five times a day. When you get up, at, pray at breakfast, pray at lunch, pray at dinner, and when you go to bed at night. You can do that. Connect with God. Make it a point to. Study. You know, I, one of the things that I've done over the years is keep Scripture in my pocket. I was taught to do this in college, and a few days ago, I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but I was carrying around a portion of Psalm 50 in my pocket. So we we think, we we say, read five, five verses of Scripture a day. That'll get you started with your Bible study. Well, it's okay if you take a Scripture and put it in your pocket for a whole week and spend time with that Scripture. What does it mean? What leaps off the page at you? Give, we're generous. We are generous because God is first generous toward us. God is so generous. We serve little bottoms. We serve making pillowcase dresses for those who wouldn't have any and send them to faraway lands. 
We send work teams to other countries. Gene and Helen Pestle, Gene, Pastor Gene and Helen Pestle just got back from the medical missionary, the medical mission in Mexico a couple of weeks ago. And we share. A good time to share is through the prayer at your Thanksgiving table. What are you preparing to thank God for, for how he has seen you through this unusual time. Pray, study, give, serve, share. Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, about your body, what you shall wear. Is not your life more than food and your body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. Do they, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more, much more valuable, valuable than they? So I, I want to ask you a question this morning. And where do you look when you want to see the eye of God? Where do you look when you want to see the eye of God? It's a real question. Pardon me? Yeah, grandson. Yeah, I, I knew you'd work that in somehow. <laughs> Axel, our grandson, is in the house. You know, I, 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 I cheered up when I was telling Jen, uh, uh, Jen Klima about that. I said, this is the first time I've preached with Axel in the room. kind of had to get a grip. Where do, you, where, do you, where do you look when you want to see the eye of God? I was driving south on 62 from the parsonage uh, about uh, two and a half weeks ago, and there was a beautiful, beautiful sunset, which the, our sunsets around here frequently are so beautiful. And, and, but just behind a kind of a, a little... A uh, band of clouds, you could see the, sand, so the, the shape of the sun, and it stretched out across the clouds, and it made it look like an eye, a beautiful eye in the sky. There is, if you Google it, if you Google the eye of God, there uh, is, you'll, you'll find a picture of the Eye of God nebula in the universe. Those look to, who look to the heavens and they perceive the Eye of God there. Where do you think, when, where do you look when you look for the Eye of God? That immutable, transcendent, non-physical, omnipresent, omnipresent, omniscient, personal, free, all-loving, all-just, all-merciful, creator of the universe, God. That's big picture stuff. We saw, sing in this service sometimes, our God is an awesome God. And that God, that big God, that big cinematic picture, broad, big broad screen God is awesome. Yet God is also wise. Who can relate to that? When God is that big, creator of the universe, who can relate to that? So we have a baby born in a manger. And if that baby is not cared for and protected and nurtured, he will never survive. And that God, the eye of God in Jesus, Jesus is always 
speaking truth. Jesus asked for more. When you look in his eyes, Jesus asks for more and offers more. What good it is, is it if someone were to gain the whole world yet lose or forfeit your soul? That Jesus, if you look in his eyes, he asks for more and offers more. Jesus values you more, even than you value yourself. Rise, go. Your faith has made you well. Sin no more. Jesus values all of us. When you look in Jesus' eyes, you see he values you so much. And the one next to you, so much. And him and her and him and her. When you look in his eyes, Jesus is motivated by compassion. Jesus forgives. Jesus does not, like Pastor Carol said, extraordinary people are not perfect. Sometimes they have to be washed up, cleaned up. They're kind of grimy. And that's what God can do for us. And send us again on our way. Okay, so I was telling you that I was carrying the Uh, Psalm 50 around with me and spending time with those verses and I ran across verse 15 God says to us through Psalm 50 call upon call upon me call upon me in your time of trouble And I will deliver you, and you will glorify me. You'll return and give thanks. That's a huge thing. That is a seismic thing. I will deliver you in your time of trouble. And friends, I've had some times of trouble, and you have too. And God will deliver you, Bob Dye. You know, you know the good news of that. What a promise, deliverance. Since this is Thanksgiving Sunday, we need to learn a lot about this lesson because it's so easy to forget, it's so easy to, lo- to lose touch with our very source of life. How did we get where we are? All the blessings that have p- been poured onto us, it's easy to think that we got, got where we are because we are our own creation. <laughs> We're like that man who who was going to receive an award or something, and he stood up to make a response after he received the reward, and his tongue got twisted, so he, he, he said, I don't appreciate this, but I really deserve it. We're like that guy sometimes. Don't appreciate it, but it's as if we are our own creation. We interpret our success, our achievements, accomplishments, as if they are the, a result of our own doing. So let me remind us, 
I didn't learn, I did not earn. I simply received the gift of parents who loved me so much, who sacrificed me, who encouraged me, and supported me. I did not earn, I simply received the gift of a good public education. I did not earn, I simply received the right to put down roots on this part of the globe where my voice matters and I'm free to use it, where my voice counts and I'm free to use it. I did not earn, but I'm free to use my voice to speak, to proclaim the truth as I understand it. I could have been born in the Sudan, and wouldn't that have been a different journey? Or born in Haiti? It's a gift. You see, it's a gift. So in, on this week of thanksgiving, offer God your sacrifice of thanksgiving. Offer God your sacrifice of thanksgiving and be thinking about what you will pray around your thanksgiving table. What will you be thankful for? Where have you in your life looked God straight in the eye? We sing this song sometimes around this church. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm thankful. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Will you pray with me as the band comes forward? Oh, dear God, we are so thankful because of what we have seen. Oh, this old world needs to be cleaned up sometimes. This old world needs to be cleaned up so much of the time. But you are larger than all of it. You are stronger than any storm. And so help us, Lord, to feel your love, to see your face to look you square in the eye so we can see again how much you love the likes of us. Amen.
every season, gratitude will transform your life. When you live in gratitude, you remember that God looks you straight in the eye and says to you, I'm grateful for you. I'm proud of you. I support what you are doing. And when I don't, I'll redirect your path. So, in every season, gratitude will transform your life. Remember from whence you have come and to whom is owed the glory. I'm thankful for you. You are extraordinary people. In Jesus' name I send you. Amen. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. 